I've told a great many secrets, tis true. Beyond this door lies the Holocron Vault. The Holocrons contain the most closely guarded secrets of the Jedi Order. From the Holocron Vault, today we have, once again, uh, actually we have a question. Hey, Wookie, have you ever ripped somebody's arm off and beat him over the head with it? Well, there was this one time on Mandalore. <laughs> and we also got one of our new favorites. Uh, he's leaking all over the place, especially in the 501st. Leaky Trooper, how's it going today? Not too bad. Thanks for having me, guys. All right, cool. Hey, uh, today we're going to talk about the Dark Saber, aka or however you want to refer to as Black Saber. I know it's been referred to as both. They actually do refer to it as both in canon, believe it or not. Uh, we'll hit you up with that too. Um, but we're going to start off with a little bit of history. As you can see, this big, beautiful sculpture we have in front of us, and uh, if you've ever watched the uh, Forces of Destiny uh, little clip videos that we told you to watch, the ones that you can find on the internet or on Disney Plus, uh, there's actually two uh, Mandalorians you see there. Uh, they have a storyline where you have a Sabine Red uh, mixing it up with an old friend, Mandalorian bounty hunter. Um, I suggest you watch it. And the guy that they're in front of right there happens to be Trey Vizsla. Trey Vizsla. T A R R E. Trey Vizsla. Well, that's what we're going to call him. Either way, the story behind Trey Vizsla is he is the first, and to our knowledge, the only Jedi Mandalorian. And he forges a special lightsaber called the Darksaber. Now, we know a lot of you guys are trying to figure out timelines. We know it's tough. We know we've been advised to, to write the whole world encyclopedia of timelines. And we've gone over 100 times on how far that would be and how hard it would be to even follow. But we will give you this little clue. and We'll try to hit you up with some other stuff in there. So we're going to give you the timeline here. He was pre-1019 BBY, which means he was around during the Old Republic times. And yes, you know Old Republic because you know Raven, Mavic, all, Ma Malik, and all that type right there. Um, we know he was around there because they referenced the fact that around uh, 1019 BBY, before the Battle of Yemen, uh, which is right when the Sith Brotherhood, which is Darth Bane type group for you guys, they're following in your, your little guides. Um, right around that time, on Coruscant, the Jedi Temple was like switching hands back and forth between the Jedi and the Sith. And we know that they mentioned that that's when they broke into the Jedi Temple and out of one of their vaults, the Mandalorians stole, a group of Mandalorians stole the Darksaber out of the vault. Um, Question. Yes. For those who don't know, how was it in the vault? Well, quick, I, little, quick little toss out there. You don't have to go into deep detail. Yeah. So, I, assuming, because I think it's it's left up to assumption, but I assume because it was such a special version of the Sabres, and the fact that it was the first Mandalorian that was in there, and they knew because the mask with... They haven't said this because you know a lot of the Old Republic stuff hasn't come over to canon yet, but you, mm -hmm, if right. you know that the first Mandalorian's mask was something that it was very prominent, and that's what Darth Raven ended up putting on. Well, originally it was Raven that put it on. Then Darth Raven kind of took it over. So I think what they're trying to infer is that they don't want any of those uh, Mandalorian related artifacts going back because they know that if you have that, then you can control the Mandalorians. And at the time, the Jedis didn't want the Mandalorians to get either on the Sith side or kind of be rogue bounty hunters type thing. So I think they kind of kept it in the middle there where they figured, hey, look, this is probably something that they're going to they're going to form a cult around, so let's not let them have it. They had it into the into okay. the vault. But yeah. after that, so they went back. Uh, mm -hmm. Since he was uh, part of the Visra house, which is a famous house uh, and a famous clan, to be a matter of fact, they kept passing it down from generation to generation. Um, in non-canon, and we're not going to talk, well, I guess we just did talk a bit about non-canon, but we're not going to talk much more about non-canon. In one of the non-canon books, in uh, because everybody probably has read this book or heard about this book. It's Open Season, uh, the Django Fett arc. Um, in that arc, there is a Vis Visla who is named Tor, T-O-R, and he actually is the first person we kind of see with the Darksaber uh, in real life. And he hands it, or in you know, comic life, and he hands it no, down. No, no, real life, you had it right. <laughs> and he hands it down to Free Visla. Uh, now, Tor 2 kind of was, in, in non-canon, he was kind of like there's a civil war going on, which you'll see this. I mean, I know they, they kind of classify a lot. Star Wars fans will classify the the Mandalorian Civil War fans, some will, as uh, the thing that happened in Clone Wars. But 
the Mandalorians had a lot of civil wars and they had a lot of uh, sieges. And this is just one of the civil wars that they had. Um, and Tor pretty much handed it down after that. We're not going to get into the whole reason why, but he handed it down to this guy right here, Pre Vizsla, who then go brings us back to Ken. Pre Vizsla has the sword and he reunites the uh, Death Watch, much like his brethren did before him, because the Mandalorians were turning peaceful again, as we all remember from Clone Wars. Uh, Satine. Uh, wanted a peaceful Mandalorian, the new Mandalorians, which is kind of exactly what it was like in the old days of open season. But, and he didn't want that. He wanted a more rough tumble, we conquer type person. So he formed the Death Watch and he decided that the Death Watch was going to assassinate Satine, as we all know. And that didn't go so well for a little bit. But he got in a couple battles too with the Trade Federation or people that were affiliated with that, especially Dooku, if you see the scar on his face. That definitely came from Dooku because he decided to take Darksaber and he thought he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Dooku and Dooku gave him a little love tap. Uh, also something really cool about Pre, Leaky, I think this is kind of your category right here. This, what is this? Yeah, this is um, this is the only time you're going to see Pre Vizsla up to this point released in this set. This was from um, the Lego set 9525, which came out in about 2012. When it came out, it was 400 pieces, about 50 bucks. But now, and I think Wookie looked this up, it's $50 just for the minifigure, and that's used. The The set goes for about, it's upwards of $300, and it comes with pre ship, the gauntlet, comes with the Mandalorian Warrior and Obi-Wan Kenobi. You might be able to find him just by himself a little bit cheaper on there. That was only a couple of the sales that I saw going on on eBay. Um, that was not a sold item. That was just what they were offering that are on there. So I know that they are on there, and they fluctuate, but they're they're not getting cheaper. Yeah, well, my no. um, my gold source is Bricklink, and he's you can get him for thirty bucks without his accessories. Um, that little black lightsaber, just the the, the blade, that's, that's going for six bucks just yeah. for that. And I mean that's crazy. So uh, yeah, I mean I think we're gonna have, especially with Leaky around, you know, member of the five hundred first, but also a, a big fan of the Legos and, and knows a lot about the collection of the, the Star Wars Legos. I think we're gonna have a little bit more of this on there, and that's great. And that I, as far as I know, and I not, I mean obviously I love Star Wars stuff, and I do have a bunch of Lego sets too. I don't remember ever there being a black saber before, and the actual black piece that fits into the sabers, like you can find a bunch of red ones the green ones whatever but i don't ever remember seeing a black one either besides in this um so anyways but let back to let's get back to pre real quickly so pre gets the cut on the face from dooku then he decides to go fight ahsoka for some reason i don't know why you're fighting with ahsoka but that was also in clone wars so he's out there trying to fight with ahsoka and eventually he teams up with darth maul um not sure that's the best idea ever to team up with darth maul but some people have survived that before Unfortunately for Pre, as we all know, it didn't go so well because the Shadow Collective wanted to take over the Mandalorians. And as Pre explained that if you have got the Darksaber, you're in charge of all the Mandalorians. Well, Darth Maul decapitated him. Um, and when Darth did that, he did kind of take over. But this is, a, this is actually kind of like an interesting point, right? So when that happened, we're talking about, once again, another siege or another civil war. Uh, that was happening. It happened during Clone Wars of Mandalore. Um, you know, Satine obviously was assassinated. Then Pre was assassinated. Bo-Katana kind of split off at this point because she's like, "This he's not a Mandalore, so we're not following him. And you kind of had two characters that really got behind um, Darth Maul. And the two characters we're going to talk about real quickly. Uh, we talked about them before. We'll talk about them again. Gar Saxton and our girl Rook. Um, they actually Rook. lead us... In, Rook's an important name. Pay attention to the name Rook. They actually lead us into a very, also a very important thing because, as you know, this is the trade paperback cover for the only series uh, that Dark Horse ever produced that actually made it to the new canon, and that is Son of Death Mirror. So, in Son of Death Mirror, what happens, uh, and we see it in the last scenes, actually, of Clone Wars, in some of the scenes there, the last arc of that storyline, is the Emperor comes back and kind of gives a little bit of a little jiggly jiggly force lightning to Darth Maul. Uh, he captures what, him and what takes What kind him. of force lightning was that? Jiggly jiggly. If you ever watch the 
<laughs> was it the Yoda Chronicles? It was one of those, one of the Yoda yeah. Chronicles or something. Yeah, like like, really? um, yeah. if you if you watch that, you'll get that joke. If not, sorry, not good at jokes. <laughs> no, that was good. I like it. Uh, um, but so he takes him and puts him in like the sphere. I think is the, the name of the prison they end up putting him in. They kind of torture him a little bit, and Gar and Rook come out and just start beating up droids and stuff. They yeah, end up yeah. freeing him. Gar ends up giving Darth the Darth uh, or Dark Saber back to Darth Maul, and Darth Maul ends up uh, commanding the Death Watch again. And he starts now. He's really ticked off not only at the Emperor because the Emperor's kind of given up on him, but also at any of the people that were in uh, the Trade Federation. Um, he there's a couple of battles he goes through in these books. I would say three kind of is really cool. Well, one of course is great because that's where it shows the storyline of of the dark saber and him dark saber and him being freed and everything like that but everybody knows that book already and that's pretty pretty sweet but i'd get three too because it's as you can see the cover's got the saber on it and there's some great storylines that go in there two is a good book because you should buy the whole arc but it doesn't really have much of the dark saber in it um and then four is the finale and that is when they go and um that's when they're on the actual planet of death mirror and Mother Towson, yes, Tess. Towson. Yeah, Mother Towson gets like, she gets giggly, giggly too. But like, she turns to bone and dust. Uh, and they drag Darth Maul away, and he does not have the dark saber uh, with him anymore. And that's the last we'll ever see the dark saber in Darth Maul's hands. Yeah, I got to jump in real quick. I actually just found um, there was another set, seven five zero two two Mandalorian speeder where it comes with Darth Maul with his robo legs, and he does have the dark saber in that set. So it was pre this, pre Sons of Darth Maul, probably from Clone Wars. But sorry, so that, no, that's cool. So in the nine canon stuff, when he has the, that's the awesome. Legs, okay, like, that is cool. That is cool. Uh, that so is that working. that would actually probably be right after. I mean, technically, when you think of it, that would be right. That would be right. Well, when could it be? Because he assassinates. Well, he does run it for a little bit, so that'd be right after he cuts off the head the head cutting so it'd be right after the head cutting and then he'd have yep. the set would come out that's super cool so the next thing that happens after the son of death mirror set uh or after son of death mirror arc is um rebels rebels the next time you kind of see it so like that right there we're talking about you know 19 bby till about mm, probably like 17 16 bby that all happened and then then the the dark saber disappears for like about another almost 10 years because when rebels was on, it was like six BBY to zero BBY. And halfway through that, you have um, the two, probably the two shows that best get into it is with Ezra with the vision and voices where he gets there and, and he, the sisters are ghosts and they're trying to possess people. Um, and then trials of the dark saber, which is kind of even cooler. Cause that's when Sabine actually gets the dark saber back and then Sabine holds on to it. Now, Sabine's whole arc with the Darksaber is kind of love-hate relationship. She doesn't think she's worthy. Um, and later on, we find why. Because we know that she created the uh, the weapon that can just um, incinerate uh, Mandalorians in her in their armor. Um, and she actually uses the Darksaber to blow up that super weapon. But she is always trying for the... <laughs> till that point, she's always trying to hand off the Darksaber. At one point, um, Gar Saxton is implemented uh, by the uh, the Imperials to take over and be kind of the liaison or, or leader of uh, Mandalore. Uh, he's so he he finds out that there's the Jedi's there. He finds out that the dark sabers back around, and he tells House Ren that they can either die or give him the dark saber. At which point, uh, his mom, her mom, and brother turn the dark saber over. Sabine's to, mom and brother. Yes, yeah, yes. Sabine's mom and brother yes. turn the dark saber over to Gar Saxton. Mm -hmm. um, Gar Saxton's a jerk, <laughs> and he, he he pretty much backstabs him and says, "Well, since you were able to give me the dark saber, that means you talk to the Jedi's and your daughter, mm -hmm. and since they're traitors, you're pretty much traitors. So I'm going to kill yeah. you anyways." Yeah. And uh, and the 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 the, the brother says like, ah, well, hey, you know, actually I'm on your side. And he goes, well, you get to choose between me or your family. 
because this he was like, yeah, the, whoever has the dark saber is the true leader of Mandalore, so he is the true leader. He's like, yeah, that's what I like to hear. You should come join my side. Because now I choose my family. The brother says, and then uh, he goes, okay, well I'm gonna kill you too. And then Sabine Wren jumps in and says, yeah, not so fast. And she gets uh, Ezra's lightsaber, and it actually isn't the best fight scene. And there's like crackling of ice at one point and everything else, but. At the end of the day, she does the double cross, and we know what's going to happen. I mean, if you watch this live, you know she's not going to cut his head off. And she doesn't. She doesn't cut his head off. Um, she kind of lets him live. Uh, but he, when she turns her back, he decides he's going to shoot her. But Mommy Dearest decides to shoot him first, luckily. So that was probably... Yeah, we all saw that coming. I get it. Um, not the Han, best part of the hey, story. Wait. Han shot first. Yeah. I just want to point that out <laughs> i think that was a nod to han shooting first uh because it kind of was like they did the thing where it was like you remember it was you kind of just looked at the guy and how yeah. this how it comes down it's like gar is kind of getting shot but you're not really seeing what's going on with gar so but i wonder much. if this is going to be like the dooku maneuver whenever they do that you're going right. to think cut someone's head off and they're just they're just you know tricking you Right, I always wait every time I see the saber cross at the throat. It's like, oh, he's, he's getting dookied. He's getting dookied. <laughs> that, yeah, well, this one had a bullet through him, so I think he's done. I mean, I don't think they're bringing it back. Plus, it's been too long. Um, and more stuff happened after that. So, what did happen after that? So she's still, so she's still in there. She's still in charge of the dark saber. She's hanging out. How you doing? And um, and very very reluctantly, once again, she she feels like she's stuck with it. She's just like, man, I can't, yeah, I can't get rid of this thing. I think they actually did a kind of a disservice because you could tell she's eventually gonna get away because of how that was one of the worst. Like they do a great job with her uh, a lot of the times, but one of the worst parts that they were doing was when they were kind of trying to get it out of her hand so quickly, like it was hot lead. It kind of made sense, but it kind of also didn't make sense. It makes yeah. more sense in retrospect when you know that she created the super weapon that was killing, that they used eventually to start just uh, incinerating the Mandalorians. But like still to that point, you hadn't got there yet. So it was, and even at that, really, was that why you're trying to give it up? That didn't make tons of sense. She ended up, like I said, she ended up using it to stab it and 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 kind of redeeming herself in that aspect. But she was never a redemption story, right? Like, I don't think she was, you know, there was never the Darth Vader redemption or like, I mean, it, she just never was that far into it. She just became a fan favorite. And a lot of storyline was kind of always like, okay, cool. She doesn't want to be on Mandalore, but you could also understand why, because uh, every five years they're having a civil war or they're like being <laughs> sieged by each other or whatever else is going on there. Like I got or, it. or someone from Gasmere is taking over yeah, or yeah. starting a new, you know, that's her whole Mando, life. you know, horned helmet, Mandalorian armor, you know, watch. We'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just like crazy stuff going out. So like who blames her for not wanting to be part of the Mandalorians and uh, wanting to do something a little different. Plus, you got to remember, too, at the time, the Empire had their boot or fist because Gar Saxton was, you know, put in charge there. Kind of like a moth, but he wouldn't technically be a moth. He'd just be the leader of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, who does want to stay there? Because you're living really under imp uh, Imperial um, control. Because actually, after Gar Saxton dies, doesn't Tiberius, isn't that guy's name? Tiberius Saxton, his, like, son or cousin son or whatever the heck he is, takes over. Doesn't have the Darksaber, but takes over. Uh yeah, he's the one that uses super weapon or whatever, but like, yeah. yeah. So I get that portion. I don't think they needed to do the let's try to throw it away and find because I'm not worthy. Like, that was a little too much. But neither here nor there. Still great, still great series. I'm not gonna deny it. But eventually, eventually, she gets it done. Eventually, she gets it done, and she gives uh, she gives it out to one of our favorites, Bokatana. Bokatana, of course, is the teen sister. Uh, she broke away from. Uh, the Mandalorian's Death Watch. She was huge into it till the, I mean, even against her sister, till the point that Darth Maul took over. She left for a while. We end up seeing her come back at the end of, oh, what would that be? The second or third Civil War? The one that was at the end of season seven for um, the Clone Wars. Uh, she ends up fighting with Ahsoka, trying to take out Darth Maul. They end up uh, capturing. Gar Saxon, obviously, and um, Rook, who then the Empire comes and frees, which is kind of a weird time jump. So that episode actually came out 
after like three years after Rebels, we already knew that the Empire at that point had reinstated them. So at zero BBY, remember this is confusing. So we're talking Clone Wars. The last season seven of Clone Wars had to happen around 19 BBY. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then yep. Gar Saxton, probably the Empire when they were kind of installed him was around six BBY. Uh, when Bo-Katana, so then probably around 2 BBY is when Sabine Wren gets the Darksaber, and then at 0 BBY, Bo-Katana gets the lightsaber. This is, we're going to tell it, this is, there's a reason why we're saying all these numbers. Um, and then all the Mandalorians, including our friend Rook, seem to bow down to her and call her the, uh, the chief Mandalorian or Mandalorian. And, and she kind of, yeah, I mean, she ran it for a while anyway. So, I mean, everyone was kind of willing to accept her as their leader again, anyhow, because they were like, oh. hey, you know, she kind really- of actually, but they weren't. So like they were, when the, the Mandalorians decided that it would be better to, because they had already had that. They had just gotten out of that civil war. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Darth Maul. So they had figured that, that after that, it would be better to be kind of under Imperial rule. Most of them, not all of them, had thought it would be better to be under Imperial rule as long as they were being ran by a Mandalore. Right. So that's why they kind of fell in step with Gar Saxton. But you could tell a lot of them weren't happy because they were ready to rebel. There were splinter groups. And one of the biggest splinter groups were read by, led by Bo-Katan. And obviously, like Bo-Katan, was a warrior because she was part of Death Watch for a while, but she was mm-hmm. also loved her sister and believed that maybe we should just be our own thing and not really uh, be loyal. To the her. Empire kept. Uh, how how does Vader put it? Um, Pray I don't alter the deal any further. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they keep changing the rules right, of, right. The, of the deal as the deal keeps going. So more and more as more as the Empire keeps jacking them around and you know messing up the already agreed deal the more of them go wait a minute maybe it's time to become you know a a group of mandalorians again well i think too when you put the super weapon out there and you just start blowing up mandalorians like left and right and you know that the empire was the one that was trying to you know had it and that's how they're really going to put the boot on them I think a lot of those clans were like yeah we're done with this you know so and the ones fighting for you and the ones fighting against you right. together. They right. were just leveling the playing field with they didn't care. They were just sacrificing them. Right, that, right. That was the final big push that and Laura went, all right, that's enough of that. Right. So after that, the next time we see it is here, and that's in the show Mandalore, the Mandalorian, and it's uh, when Moff Gideon has it. Um, and that's 9ABY, so 9 after the Ballion. So it's 9 years we hadn't seen it. And the gap- so real quick, I want our listeners to understand and really dislike how bad this guy is. So Moff Gideon ran Kashyyyk for a while and hunted Wookiees for fun oh, and sport, yeah. and he is a bad, bad man. He should go down. Okay. Uh, so that's your PSA for the day. <laughs> Uh, Wookie would like to rip off his arm and beat him over the head with it. Just oh, I will. Get him. Get him. Get him. I do not like him. So, yeah, so that wasn't the only thing. So, with Moth 2, he was one of the survivors. Uh, and he actually, I think, faked his own death, if I recall correctly. And that's how he got out of being charged with war crimes and then met up with a bunch of other guys and or a bunch of the other Imperials and formed a little group and then went. <clears throat> So we don't know exactly what happened, but we have surmised that this may be an option. This is not a spoiler, or it's not a spoiler because we don't know that this happened, but we we think this might be an option. We believe we that Bo Katana has been cast. We believe that there's for the Mandalorian show. We also believe that there's a um, that one of the characters that they cast could definitely be the cast the character of Rook. Uh, and we think that they might do a flashback. Well, we've already seen one flash of what might have been uh, the purge of Mandalore. Um, and we've had ref, and he has referenced personally, he has referenced kind of like a, a siege 
Mandalore. Now, I know a lot of people think that the Siege of Mandalore is a reference back to the, the was it the 19 BBY siege mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or Civil War? But like the Mandalorians every 10 years are having a siege <laughs> or having a siege or a, or a civil war. I mean, this isn't something unique. I mean, it happened in every, everything. I mean, they had it in rebels because technically when Gar Saxton was there and uh, Bo-Katana and the rest of them kind of stood up to him, that was technically a Mandalorian civil war technically. And they, they siege Mandalore because that's what it is. So we're thinking it's, a, we think that he was referencing a small S and if he's doing that, he's referencing that he has direct knowledge of the time period between zero BBY and nine ABY. Um, if that's the case, we also have, if they're going to, they're going to cast Rook. We think that Rook might have been able to backstab uh, Bo-Katana because if you ever look at it, she is the only person that from point A, from the beginning, when you see the dark saber for the first time in pre Vizsla's hand, She's the only person who has been there the entire time. She was right behind. She followed Pre Vizsla. Her and Gar Saxon did. Mm -hmm. Then after bo left, she followed Darth Maul. She actually helped spring Darth Maul out of the prison. Mm -hmm. Okay, Pre Vizsla is dead. Uh, Gar right. Saxon is the next one who gets the dark saber. Right. Gar Saxon is dead. The next person to get Sabine. She obviously didn't bend the knee to Sabine, but nobody really did. So the next time you see her after Gar Saxon dies is you see um, her bend the knee to Bo-Katana. Bo so she's bent the knee again. So how how they lose it? Well, I think it's very simply she may have backstabbed it. And if you ever look at it, and I think our biggest theory on this is that she becomes the armor to pay back for what she did, figuring out that, oh, man, I've been trying to do all this stuff for Mandalore, and I actually ruined Mandalore altogether by allowing – a moth or the empire to finally take control of it and take over. Um, and if you look at it, there's little clues like the horn helmet and a couple other things, but it, look, she could not be the armor. We've said it before. She could not be the armor on the Mandalorian, but it does seem like they're leaving some breadcrumbs where it could, it could equally, I mean, I don't know if you guys agree with it, but I think it could easily be, that could easily be her. And I don't know why else you'd keep bringing her up. Cause they just brought her up and changed her hairstyle. Uh, yeah. For Clone Wars season seven, she's. I, been, I I feel like it's a real strong bet that that's who it is, and that's who the the show is going to reveal as the armor, Mandalore building Mando that you see in that first season underground. It, I mean, the horned helmet, the 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 rich history that she knows. Um, it would explain. You'd explain why there's a bunch of Vizsla, the Vizsla's, the Vizsla's clan down there. Like, yeah. is it, what's it, uh, John, the, the character he plays is one. Like, right. I think there's right. two or three that they name in that small group and they're all that. Like, it would make sense because that was her, like, that was kind of her clan, right? She hung out with all of them. Like, yeah. Well, and the, and the dark saber showing up again. So whether she took it, stole it, stabbed someone in the back and got it, or just by pure dumb luck, got it as a change of heart and someone said, Hey, you need to protect this. This is our heritage and legacy. She they could go it. that route too. I mean, yeah. there's a couple different ways they could really play that out. So it, I, I don't, I, once again, definitely don't sleep on uh, son of death mirror, grab the ones for sure. Grab the threes for sure. Actually grab the whole arc for sure. Cause it's good, but um, yeah, it is. she might not be there. But I think she probably will, especially like it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I know we talk about it a lot, so it's um, it's the easiest it's the easiest route. It's the easiest path out of all of them. And she in, literally is there the whole time. Yeah, I mean they bring her back the whole time. So why mm -hmm. wouldn't you bring her back for one last show? Um, besides that, make sure you guys do the email. Uh, we should have it in the description. It's tales from the dark side underscore p. How do you do it? Podcast. So PDC maybe at <laughs> Gmail. Check it out because I probably got it wrong. But check it down in the description. Tell us what else you want to talk about. We are probably going to get into the Yellow Saber if we haven't gotten to already. It just depends on how fast we add these uh, because we do know that the Yellow Saber is coming up. So we're going to give you a little history of that. Mm -hmm. It's Yeah, it'll probably be a little bit more um, non-canon than canon because it does, doesn't really show up in canon uh, that much. Um, I got some comic books to buy. 
<laughs> yeah. There's a, uh, when, when we're taping this, there's a comic book that we know is going to come out with it soon. So we'll let you, hopefully we'll drop that before it actually comes out. So you guys can go and grab that real quickly. Um, Solo Wookie, before you tell them what to do, don't you have a little announcement? I do. All right. So I am a huge fan of a great many things. I am wearing a special shirt. It's a very famous shirt. And if someone can guess where this shirt is from in the comments. Down below. Not the live chat. It's over here. The down ones. And leave me your information. First person to guess, I will contact you. You can hit me at um, SoloWookie at Instagram, at SoloWookie. And um, I will send you a virgin Turkish variant, Darth Maul, number one. They're awesome cool. books. Yeah, it's a cool book. And um, you just got to guess where the shirt is from and who wore it. And uh, I will hit you up and get your information, and I will mail off that book. So make comments, figure it out, do some searching. It's a deep dive. I'll give you one hint. It has nothing to do with Star Wars. That's the fun part. And even better, go over to that button, force push that subscribe, go over and force choke that like, and then take and savor smash that bell so that you can come see all this wonderful content we try and bring you. Excellent. By the way, we do not take the giveaways that seriously, so we pretty much just choose a winner at will. Hopefully, it's, it's usually the first person we think um, got it right. But just know that. Uh, thanks, everybody. It was great. Uh, we'll see you on the next time, and maybe we'll talk yellow lightsabers. That's going to be a fun one. And thanks for having me, guys. I look forward to uh, joining in the future. Hopefully, you'll see my face soon. <laughs>